It's Monday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Murayo Afolabi Brown. As always, I have the ladies with me. Hello, Alaja Nima Akashat. It's a very... I'm fine. Ah, it was a busy weekend yesterday. What we prayed for my dad, my ah. siblings and I. And we did it the way my father liked. Only us. Ah. We read the Quran. We did all the prayers. My mom was there. It was really nice. I have some feedback. Some, um, some of these my mischievous uh, uh, pranks I play. One caught up with me yesterday, so my sister almost beat me yesterday. Are you serious? I will share the gist. Your old age. Old age. In my old age. Old age. She's older than me. <laughs> um, yesterday, Auntie Annie named her grandchild, oh. Remileku Timisi Re. Yeah. I calmed down one. <laughs> not call her, but I saw the video she posted. Yes. And today is my auntie's birthday, Auntie oh, Bimbo. Nice. Let me oh, call her full name. Auntie Bimbo. Yeah. Abimbola, Adijat, <laughs> oh Yele Grillo. God bless you. God bless you. Every time I think of you, I bless you in my heart. Thank you for all that you are in my life. God bless you. Happy birthday. Today after work, I've decided no work, even though it's a Monday. We're going to our house. We're going to Dubai Day. Yes. yes. Happy birthday. How are you doing? Happy birthday, Happy birthday to you, ma. Happy Hello, Tapu. How are you? I'm good. Grateful to God. Um, I've been, doing, I've been doing sales promo um, for like um, about 10 days now. So we're intensifying towards the end of the month. I, I'm grateful for the response so far. It's definitely an improvement. Last month was like, hmm, what happened with the advert? We are waiting. What happened with the sales call? We are waiting. But this month, we thank God that the effort is bringing in results. I'm excited about those that have jumped in on the offer. And I'm looking forward to more people taking advantage of the offer. Um, so please check me on social media <laughs> and jump into the offer that we have for the month of July. Um, yesterday, I had my cousin with the kids in the house. So we had like three extra children with my three boys. So six children in the house. I knew what to do. Biscuit, ice cream. Everybody was happy. Can I have more ice cream? Go and have. Can I have more biscuits? Go and have. I was like, oh, this is so cool. Except I did not sleep on Sunday yeah. afternoon. But I'm very grateful <laughs> to host That's them. Awesome. We had fun. How are you doing, Mariam Longe? I'm doing How well. How you are you? Gone totally? Not totally, but definitely the last stages of it. So I'm much better. Thank God. Okay, the God. Um, weekend was good. I used the weekend to start reading um, Stopper's book. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a really good book, especially for young people who are trying to, you know, understand this money-making game. I thought, you uh, know, um, it's good. Is but then, book out? Yes. I just know we're not you were, okay, okay. On the yes. the day I brought it anyway secondly um if you've been following me on social media you know i've been talking about plastic free july and uh, it was just it's just my way of you know bringing awareness to how we can live with less plastic and how we can live healthier so we're winding down you know end of july and uh, i hope that we all learn something from it and if you haven't caught up with it just go through my july my page this month and see all that i've been doing concerning bringing awareness and educating all of us and for those who always keep up you know with me thank you so very much yeah, and i hope that me. we'll see we'll see more and more of this in our daily lives you know yeah. can you make a malawi with those pots yes you can it's transparent pots brosilicate mm. Oh, yeah, I wanted to yeah. order that sometime. Okay. So when did you order it from? You can, you can send me the link. I tried to order okay. it. That got me a small one. Okay. I, I had to send it to anybody. Like, I, I bought yeah. Ramallah with this okay, one. I can't I advertise, but yeah, that oh, supermarket, yeah. they have... Yeah, because like, I, I, I ordered this one and it was too small. But over the weekend, it was great. I, I had the opportunity to MC the Africa Praise experience on Friday. Yes. It was awesome. I see that Inkala Shelleri is... Um, Trending Lashi, because of Aya yeah. Alashe Yori was trending because of the she used the go 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 on the stage okay. and and honestly at that moment it was a, for me it was a gospel concert mm. concert is about you getting the crowd excited and happy so Trend. she she used those trends mm. she used the one two three four five six seven eight and now it's going online saying that why would she be incorporating such into gospel it, it wasn't a time for worshiping church it was a concert it was a concert and it, and it really felt like a concert you mm. know sometimes you go to gospel concert and you just feel like Okay, this is a worship concert, but this was a praise concert, and it was fantastic. I thought it was phenomenal, and I thought she did a fantastic job. And all the other artists, all the other ministers, not artists, all the other ministers did an amazing job. It was, was fun. I mean, I, I, yeah, really I saw had, your video. You were so hyped. I was hyped. <laughs> but when, when, when um, like, what's that guy's name? Video me, Allah, back came on. Yeah. Oh, I was this. Oh, I jumped up. I had it just, no, no, it was fantastic. Thanks to Pastor Paul and the House on the Rock team for having me. It was really exciting. Okay, let's go on a short break now. When we come back, 
We'll look at the front pages of the paper. Stay with us. We'll break back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're going to start with the nation. Recapitalization, five banks in capital markets to raise 1.26 trillion naira. Etu, Danjima, others join Nine Mobile Board. Kamala Harris' campaign raises $200 million in one week. CBN clears next of kin to claim funds in Dorman's account. 28 housemates begin chase for 100 million naira SUV in the Big Brother Niger. NAF strikes as the Nigerian Air Force strikes to destroy 12 illegal refineries in Abia and Rivers. Leave Lagos out of it, NLC tells protest promoters. And Kenneth Okonkwa dumps OB, LP, two killed in Boko Haram's attacks on police stations. Okay, so, story. Um, you know, the CBN had um, said they were going to um, take over unclaimed balances in dormant accounts for that has remained there for over 10 years within some banks. And they gave directive to the banks to email the whatever relevant uh, email were att um, attached to the account. And they named this the um, unclaimed balance trust fund where these monies will be put. And so now they're saying that they have cleared anybody who are represent legal reps of um, account holders, beneficial owners, um, um, with relevant documents of the benef beneficial owners or so any account, and the next of kin document of, I'm sorry, what am I saying? I'm babbling. So they have cleared the legal reps, next of kin of uh, dormant account owners to come forward to claim whatever is in those accounts with the re relevant legal documents. And they can write um, the um, next of kin or survivors of those account owners can email or write through, through their banks to the CBN for these monies that are now going to be Keep kept in the unclaimed balance trust fund. This is me trying to summarize with all. <laughs> yes, okay. I've got um, strikes by the Nigerian Air Force have destroyed 12 illegal refinery uh, refining sites and two reservoirs in Abia and River States. So um, the NAF um, spokesperson, Air Vice Marshal, Edward Gapquet um, confirmed this yesterday. So um, first, the statement, he says that heading towards Owaza, three illegal refining sites were observed hidden under thick vegetation, which were subsequently de um, destroyed. The crew followed the river line down to Komkom and Ikoloma in River State, where nine illegal refining sites, two reservoirs were discovered and destroyed. In, to in total, 12 illegal refining sites and two reservoirs were destroyed. He says that um, the site of the illegal refining sites in fenced living environments by oil thieves was indicative of the sophistry of illegal oil refining trade and would require other means beyond airstrikes to checkmate them. He says in, in the meantime, of course, they'll keep, you know, using the airstrikes, but, you know, trying to also reminding communities of the dangers of having these refining sites within living environments. That's human beings live there. There's so many, um, you know, uh, environmental, apart from the environmental impact, also the impact on health of <coughs> human beings. So, you know, we're talking to them to please reconsider this. But in the meantime, um, the Air Force will keep doing what they're doing while, you know, hoping that in other ways, communities and everybody else will be able to talk to these people, not to endanger their lives in the name of, you know, stealing crude oil and, and all. Yeah. So I have the Kamala Harris story. So since um, Joe Biden had dropped out of the race, um, she has raised over $200 million for campaign. And these are 66% of these are from new donors. So obviously, she's not yet the official uh, um, candidate for the Democratic Party. It was just a nominee. That, and she was the fact that it's still presumptive at this time because um, it's not yet official. However, regardless of that, she has gotten $200 million already ahead. And they said they signed up about 170,000 new volunteers for the campaign. So they have about 100 days left to the campaign, and they're waiting for um, the first week in August where there will be like an online vote to officially make her the candidate of the Democratic Party. We'll see how that goes. But Why do you think she's getting a lot of money? Huh? Why do you think she's getting so much money? I mean, there's support. People just want her. The, the idea of having a female, first female, female president think, yeah. is cool, and um, yeah, she's no, getting that in our, lifetime. in our lifetime, in their lifetime, in their lifetime, but we're, we're alive we're to all part um, So I want to talk about the NLC. The NLC in Lagos are saying <clears> that the Mrs. The chairperson, Mrs. Fumi Sesi, I said that protesters should leave Lagos out of the protest that 
anyone who wants to protest should go to their own states and protest there. Um, speaking specifically that he's of the she's of the opinion that if there is peace here, then we should maintain the peace and that people who are faceless should not come and wreak havoc within Lagos and not allow people, um, uh, individuals who are not involved in the protest, go about their regular activities. Um, also mentioning, there are many other speakers, um, both um, former governor of Abia State and former aspirant on Labour Party, I mean, candidate on Labour Party, Peter Obi also spoke up, spoke up concerning this. And everybody is generally asking for peace, that is conversation around the fact that will be hijacked. And their opinion is, let's, as much as possible, listen to what the government is saying. Back to what the NLC chairperson of Lagos said is, the government should continue to engage them so that there will be no need for protest. And Lagos State should assign farmland to those who are interested in farming so that they would calm the, the tension going on amongst the youth within the states. Moving on now to the punch, hardship protests, U US, UK, Canada issue security alerts and traders fear looting. Fuel rises to 1,300 naira per litre as dep depots run dry. SIM and NIN linkage telcos begin final mass disconnection. Hmm. Court orders a billion naira payment to Oceanic Bank's <coughs> staff. Victim under pressure to drop police station rape case, says family. And uh, LH Telecoms acquires majority stake in Nine Mobile. All right, which story are we taking? I have in the um, Oceanic Bank employees. So the um, National Industrial Courts in Lagos has, uh, sorry, the Lagos Division, let me put it properly, has awarded a billion plus plus some zeros. Naira to the 8,742 former employees of the defunct Oceanic Bank. So during the merger between Oceanic and Echo Bank, some people were this um, let's go of some staff. And they had gone to court to seek several uh, reliefs, including payment of their contributions to the Staff Savings Investment Trust Fund, some unpaid gratuities, and short payments of severance benefits. Echo Bank, on the other hand, went with a counterclaim asking for uh, 967 million, <laughs> saying that this was excess severance and redundancy payment, but the court awarded judgment in favor of the ex-employees, and the court has said that they should be paid their monies before February 15th. Um, sorry, they should be paid the monies owed before the February 15th merger. Okay. Okay. I Let's have, uh, have? one more story. Go ahead. Yes. Um, you remember the um, case of the 17-year-old girl who mm. was raped by the police officer when she went there to um, report a case. And um, we remember, I think the last place we had heard was that yeah, they are taking some medical, they're doing some medical investigations and people are wondering why it's taking so long. Uh, a member of the family named with help to protect, you know, the identity of this young person said that the family, especially the mother of the girl, has been, has come under undue pressure by the family of the police officers for her to withdraw the case. So, and then it so happens that, you know, this particular officer lives in the police barracks and the mother of the girl actually has a shop just in front of the police barracks. So there's a lot of, you know, they come under, yes. In fact, I think this young boy has been told not to even be in the area because he had come on social media to reveal this part of the investigation. Anyway, the police are saying, in their response to this new information, they're saying that they have gotten the medical uh, report and then updates will be given very soon. Okay, let's go on a very short break. When we come up, we continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still reviewing Punch. You have a story. Yeah, so I have the story <laughs> of NIN linkage and the fact that telcos within Nigeria are going at the final stage of disconnecting subscribers whose um, uh, NIN number hasn't been linked with their telephone numbers. The discon this disconnection was supposed to take place around April 15th officially, but the NCC, that's the Nigerian Communications Commission, postponed it till July 31st. They said after careful consideration, it's been moved to July. 31st. And now subscribers that have not connected their numbers are now being disconnected. The deadline is 31st of July. If you do not connect your number 
by then, then your number will be disconnected. Tomorrow. Um, to, that's tomorrow. I was already disconnected. Uh, yeah, I was, I was going to say some people are already saying it. But yeah. some users said that they've had issues with some particularly, I don't even, I, I shouldn't, but the yellow company. Well, that's, the papers. Yes, even the papers, according to, thank you, my dear. So you want to, sir? Punch yellow carried it that MTN has blocked a hundred of numbers from their network and many of them have complained about losing services. They also said some have tried to reconnect. They've linked two years ago, linked it again, and they are still getting disconnected. And they are, um, the complaint is how do, how do Nigerians get redress from this, especially if you have proof that you have linked once or twice and yet yeah, you still so get I have been getting messages, in fairness, mm. I just ignore them. For the, for the past one or two weeks, I've been getting messages. Because already, you know, already linked. I just, well, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter to me, but now I got disconnected. I have to now go to the office today to go and find out what happened. A lot of wala. May, is it a lot of wala. Major headlines. So the United States, um, United Kingdom, Canada have all raised... Um, the alarm over the likelihood of violence during the um, hashtag bad governance protest in Nigeria. So they've asked their nationals in the country to avoid getting caught in the confrontation that might occur between security agencies and protesters. Also, uh, advisories have come from various markets across the nation, Abuja, Sokoto, Kano, Katsina, Ogo, Zamfara, Gombe, and so many other parts say that they need security around the market areas to prevent um, um, those who are hijacking the protest to cause violence within their area. So quite a number of, of, also in addition, quite a number of police officers have been withdrawn from non-essential services to be available for security across the nation. Um, the um, CSP, Okun Moses, directed that the withdrawal of riots, policemen ahead of the protest. It's also had um, people who had um, assigned to various uh, personalities have actually had their police officers withdrawn to um, ensure that there's enough security personnel around the, the country protect um, lives and properties. Okay, moving on quickly now to Daily Sun, our next paper. Nationwide protests fallout, senators, reps, politicians desert Abuja and travel abroad. <laughs> Nam Dekano's release will reduce tension, southeast monarchs tell Tinumbu. FG site 60 billion naira solar PV module assembling plant in Inugu. NDLA arrests Spain-based businessman with cocaine consignment concealed in sandals in Lagos State. Nine mobile constitute board, Etu Danjima, Edu, others join. And Nwanyawu Ohaneze summons emergency neck meeting. Okay, which story? NDLEA has arrested a 50 year old Spain based businessman, Francis Akadjiobi. Um, he was leaving for Spain and um, he was intercepted. They said that they found that he had cocaine, two parcels of cocaine weighing 1.20 kilograms in the, in the sandals that he was wearing. <laughs> I mean, have would they not pass that level of putting it in the sandals that you're wearing? Yeah. Or guy, are you new? <laughs> Anyways, thankfully, NDLA um, has arrested him. He claimed that he had received a consignment at a bar in Port Harcourt and that he was supposed to deliver it to a friend and neighbor in Spain for a fee of 5,000 euros. The, mo the moment he would have success, if he had successfully given it to that person, he would have received 5,000 um, euros. Of course, NDLA is on his job. They um, arrested some a kingpin of a syndicate who th their own job is to smuggle, you know, um, um, loud into Nigeria in small, small quantities mm. and also outside the country. So, well done, NDLA. Okay. So, the <coughs> people of Enugu will be hosting or accommodating the 60 billion naira solar photovoltaic. There's a um, Voltaic module assembling plant. This is an alternative energy uh, providers providing solution. And speaking during the foundation laying ceremony was the Minister for Innovation, Science and Technology, Chief Uche Naji, where he said this, of course, shows the good. This project shows the good intention of President Bola Tinubu for the Southeast. He also used the opportunity to remind them that the Southeast Development Commission was signed into law, and he says. This means that in billions, if not trillions, we'll be getting development and uh, developmental projects and monies into the southeast. And he used the opportunity to advise that they should desist from any uh, protest. He says, um, our people should not join. Indeed, Bo, don't engage in protests because any time we waste in, pro in protests, that is money to us and that, that would have entered our hands. Mm. And he's using the opportunity to so just, uh, you know, appeal to them to stay off. So according to Daily Sun, some of our senators, members of House of Reps, 
um, have left, are traveling out of the country yeah, ahead of the protest that is coming up August 1st. According to a lawmaker, mm -hmm. he said that the governors, the president are all protected. You know, many of them have multiple security operatives to protect them, but they as lawmakers don't have that and they have to find a way to protect themselves. So many of them have bought tickets and they said, hey, they're not going to the UK and they're not going to America, so don't look for them there. Looking for other countries that, <laughs> <laughs> so they're, looking, they're going to other countries that is not, you know, uh, very likely. And uh, many of them have actually bought their tickets already. They are actually supposed to adjourn. They are asked for a, a closer adjournment so that they can leave on time mm -hmm. and take their families. Some of them have gone under the guise of my children are going for, for summer holidays or medical checkups, but so they you know really? that they are not yeah. properly secure because, according mm -hmm. to them, they are also remembering what happened in Kenya that mm -hmm. many of the protesters. Um, so they, they on, the, on the on the so the our own parliament. national assembly and other houses are on their recess. Even the judiciary is on the recess. Mm. Yes. But you know how this they would. Re uh -huh. Thank you for pointing it mm. out because so there was, was something regular recess happened. and this is a season of holiday. But um, let me just take the story of the southeast because the national the council of southeastern traditional rulers have appealed to the federal government to release Namdekano. He expressed optimism that his freedom would douse the tension within the area. They said they are joining their voices with the five governors of the Southeast who called for his release, as well as all the lawmakers of the Southeast who have also called for his release, saying that there are some people that are diehard fans of Namdi Kanu and that they are, because he hasn't been released is the reason that there, there's a lot of um, tension within that, that geopolitical zone. They also mentioned that, of course, they expect that there would be some form of agreement that measures and um, deals to be made to ensure that ha after it's released, nothing happens. But they, as um, the Council of um, Igwe's within the Southeast, feel that it will bring down the tension and promote peace within the area. And they also mentioned that many people feel pain for the fact that he's been locked up for so long. They are appealing to the president to look into pardoning him and create new measures to protect the region. Okay, moving on, another story. The point, uh, let's find a story that mm -hmm. harrowing tales of homeless women with disabilities sexually abused by several men. Panic group, panic grips Imo, uh, over res, Imo, Imo residents over reported prowling of organ harvesters. Oh. Uh, President Tinubu should resign as Minister of Petroleum, says Olisa Bakuba, and uh, bank stability at risk, experts warn. Okay, which story? Okay, so I have this um, harrowing tales of the homeless woman with disabilities, sexually abused. Um, her name is Abiba Toyin Ahmed. She's, um, she was born deaf with some intellectual disability as well. And so she cannot remember or recollect anything. She lives in Oshun State. And the point, thank you for taking this story in Oshun State. She's been se severely raped by random men. She cannot identify any of them. She's been pregnant five times, has four kids. Eh? She's now HIV positive. And she's constantly taking advantage of only one man of all the, two, uh, of all the men <sighs> married her to house her, but he died two years ago. And so she's back to the same experiences where she's been kicked out by her family members, not cared for, hung, left hungry, and so left at the mercy of... Um, uh, men who, 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 who um, take advantage of. I want to appeal to the First Lady of Washington State. I want to appeal to your kind office because the chairperson of the Deaf Women Association, Mrs. Omolara Oyebode, is the one giving this account to the point on her experiences her entire life and how they've struggled to care for her and how they are now burdened. They've also had to raise money within that association to pay for her hospital bills. I, can, I, help, I appeal to you kindly, please take you know, this person. Yeah. She's a resident of Oshogo. Okay, I have uh, one story that caught my attention in um, the point is um, many residents in Oweri, uh, the capital city of Imo State and Envirus, have been thrown into a huge worry because um, organ harvesters are, <laughs> are, are there kidnapping and terrifying the entire, the entire community. Residents claim that the organ harvesters have taken over the city and call on the state governor to strengthen security in the state. Um, to curb illegal businesses. And they've also, the government has also warned them to be careful with the kind of transportation they're entering because actually they use public transportation buses wow. to abduct some of these um, young, 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 young people, take them, kill them, remove their organs and sell. And it's actually a major business now, mm. according to this report. Mm. So organ harvesters are now in a worry. They have started their illegal trade of abducting people, taking them to their hideouts and killing them. They, they will kill them and harvest their organs. People come to these hideouts to buy human parts. I have stopped visiting Pepe... 
uh, soup joint because <laughs> there is no one to trust now. <laughs> one might be eating human, human flesh in the name of goat meat, pepper soup, all sorts of things. So there are some hog hog and there are some... Uh, we'll look for ways to dispose just of Just horrible, horrible, horrific. This is we the people. Mm. Okay, our final paper, Vanguard. Let's see how much time we have. Uh, hardship, police protests, organizers dig in. Abuja politicians behind banditry and killings in Benue says Governor Aliyah. Uh, shortage, fuel prices rise 21% to 850 Naira per litre as marketers shut stations. Gay marriage approval, Anglicans threaten to break away from Church of England. Yes, I have that story. Oh. So the Church of Nigeria, Anglican Church, has threatened to break away from the Church of England after uh, <coughs> General Snoid voted to approve same-sex marriage within mm -hmm. the church. The Nigerian church is actually the biggest, um, the largest communion um, that has condemned the decision and the violation of its biblical teachings and has announced that is no longer recognizing the authority. It would no longer recognize the authority of the Church of England if it proceeds with the move. They also mentioned that um, there was a 95% vote. No, 95% voted for, 95 votes for, 91% um, against, and the house of, just a breakdown of all the votes according to how it went. But they've said that... This is their, where they stand, sure. because many, many, where they are positioned. And many Nigerians have been clamoring to find out what they would say. So this, I'm sure, would bring peace to the hearts of Nigerian okay. Anglicans. That's all we can take on Front Page Review this morning. Let's go on a short break. When we come back, we continue with the show. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So there have been continued um, long queues across the nation concerning the um, NIN ban. Many, many phone lines have been barred because of their, uh, their network has barred them as a result of not being able to link their phone numbers to their NIN. Many claim that they have actually linked their NIN numbers to their phone, but for whatever reason, um, it's not recognized by the network. So. Um, some of the networks have actually gone ahead to ban um, many of the phone numbers um, across the nation. Millions have actually been banned. Obviously, they were working towards the July 31st deadline, which they had already given as a time for people to link their NIN. Um, what are your thoughts? We'd like to open our phone lines for Nigerians to call in to share their own various experiences on this, because we know that many are actually gone through in this. I've gone through this. You can call us on 081-0764-1679, 090241. 63440. You can also tweet to us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag yourviewTVC so we can read your tweet. So for, for me, I've actually linked it because I mean, I have linked my phone number to my NIN. Um, so I was surprised. I got the messages in the last two weeks. I've been getting those messages NIN update, NIN update. But I disregarded it because I just thought it was a general message to all, to all Nigerians, not knowing that I was actually going to be affected until I was barred. Um, yes, I think it was yesterday or two nights ago. I was bad. I can't make any calls. And you can't even reach me. If you try to call me, it says a number doesn't exist. It's only my WhatsApp that is, that is working. So I have to make that trip today to, to the phone, to the mm. network, to see how I can rec get reconnected. But what are your thoughts on them? Have you experienced this or doing whatever experience? My own personal experience hasn't been anything. When you asked us to link, I linked up. And I haven't had any of those issues back and forth. I've heard, of course, people around me. You know, sometimes you make some calls and it'll tell you that the number you've called does not exist and you're shocked. So what you have explained, I've heard many people also speak about that. So there are two things now. We do, I think we have a number of Nigerians who still haven't done the proper linking. But then also the telcos, I think they're having an issue too with their data or something of the sort. There are just too many people complaining of, you know, having linked their numbers and still they are being sent these messages or bad. Um, so I guess we'll wait to hear what um, the telco says. But I feel it's unfair to punish Nigerians if this is a problem that the telcos are unable to handle and not that Nigerians are not doing what they are meant to do. Yeah, so we've been linking this our lines for a while. <laughs> you know, the notice to link NIN side with the former minister for um, 
and Tammy's office was the communication, communication and digital. Yeah. Uh, and we've been on it for a while. And the uh, networks or the telcos were made to give us links to link our lines. I did mine under the green network. I went and some, so, so, suddenly there was a blockage. Some, they kept giving me the notification. So once I was traveling to, okay, yeah, when I was traveling for my father-in-law's burial, I saw their boots just empty. At the airport, I said, ah, this is the place to do it. I went in. They linked it for a few days. They said 24 hours, but it happened to be 48 hours. Eventually, we had this linkage, and then it was corrected. So such ease in doing things is what we need right now. This morning, one of the hairdressers was saying her MTN was already blocked, and it was because of linkage. I was like, did you link your number? She said she did, but that she found out that she was... So the linking and the, whatever technology they used at the time sending out links probably didn't work for so particularly the MTN network. And so now they are going to compel hardship on Nigerians. When my uh, SIM got lost and I wanted to recover it, if you even drive past their, their first uh, office, you don't want to stop there. The crowd is overwhelming. And now that there's a need for people to want to go and because of, we, you know this... Line. This NIN, the uh, numbers and all of that are also linked to our finances, our financial institutions. People will be worrying and are now to open them. This is what we would prefer to avoid. This is what we would rather avoid, this rush to do it. So as a telco, I would expect more innovative solutions on how to link numbers without people crowding that pl those places or having to get one uh, document or the other. You can't expose us because inside that problem, somebody will create a business. Yes. You have to settle some settle to see some settle. So please. <laughs> and they should please talk to their staff. They, there's no need to be rude to anybody when we come to your office. Don't give us attitude. Because we come now. And you they see them are, when they they're overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. When they're overwhelmed, mm -hmm. they give you some attitude except they know you. Nigerians yeah. also give them attitude when they come. Yeah. They are angry. And it's not them that disconnected you. We had over 200 people out there. And they would have been there yeah. for morning. Yeah, yes. So, they... so um, I, I'm, I'm of the opinion that the intention is right. You know, every, every phone number that we have should be identified and traceable, which is what the NIN is supposed to achieve for us. An awesome idea, fantastic, but we've struggled with the implementation for this idea over the past, like in the past two years, it's been consistent. We would cut you off now. We cut you off. Oh, let's extend it. We cut you off. Soimpo did not have issues. The NIN platform itself also had issues. While Soimpo had a very smooth journey through NIN, many Nigerians have had to go revalidate, not once, but twice. My pe I had to revalidate my uh, NIN. The number that I registered, they said, come for revalidation. Then we went for revalidation. My parents went for revalidation. And then they said, no, the picture of their face is not clear. That when they took the picture then, they should come and take picture again. And it was costing money to do it again. So when a policy that is supposed to serve us and promote, protect, and all of that is now beginning to cause a lot of hardship, then we should review the policy again and place the punishment on those who have truly failed the system. Because in this place, some companies' inefficiencies have failed the system. The um, current challenge of MTN and the constant um, the, um, issue of, oh, they, they've barred your line, when people can see that they've been registered. Like at my, my own parents' case, they got a message. They did that text one where you text your, they yeah, say text yeah, this right. number. They did a text. They said you have um, been connected. Yes, okay, fantastic. So why do you now bar my number? How do we now get redress for mm -hmm. this? What went wrong with your system? Why would I come to your office and the system is down? You say, I can see your number, but I cannot connect you. Some, some, somebody needs to, like, heads must roll. Who is causing that? People will spend their the time. I will queue roll. up. You, you, like, you're number 205. You now waited and became, you got to the point where you are supposed to be attended to. And you sit down and they said, oh, we can see that your number is there. You probably linked, but we need to do something. We don't know what to do. You will come back again. Oh, it's important that we... It's, it's just, we, if you love... Productive. My pastor preached yesterday, and the message was that a lot of the evil and hardship you see Nigerians suffer is because leaders don't love. People don't love. If we love ourselves, like if you as the person who is serving me loves me, and you know the system is down, you will come outside and tell everybody, the 200 of you, oh, system is down. If you wait the next three hours, maybe you should, we will call you back or something. Like you would out of love be compassionate to people. Not that you'd be like, ah, myself, you people have been giving me hits. So I'm, I'm not bothered about you. It's, it is sad that we will now be asking them to give extension again when we need NIN to be linked. 
But you see, I mean, it was on all sides. Because like mm. I said, I got the messages saying that I should go and link it. Well, but you I, feel I, like I it was... it because I've already linked. All my numbers were like, I didn't, I didn't think I was, they were talking to me at all. Yeah. So, but that's also a system failure because we all, we all actually linked. For whatever reason, our linkage was not, didn't, um, work. We didn't, didn't work properly. So they're having us to re revalidate. Um, I don't know how we're going to fix this problem, but I have to go after the show right now. After, after yeah. work, I have to find a way and to get to the Many of the centers are just really tiny places, yeah. you know, and you have these people just queued up all the way. These people are going to be overwhelmed. I've had um, reason to be at one of the offices for this telco offices to do something. And um, I can tell you that, you know, being up there, I can see the sort of stress and that they go through. It was even as, you know, we were not even as many as what <laughs> this is going to be, but they come under a lot of pressure. But, well, that's their business. They make money from it. So what our advice is, maybe they'll need to have more people on ground. Because you have, you'll be waiting, and then somebody has to go off for a break. And the, but you still have people just waiting. So please, because there's going to be a crowd, my advice is all hands on deck, make sure everybody's out there and then we're able to sort issues. I also had the um, situation where I went the first day and they said, we could not do it, we have to wait the next day. I want to come to the place and have my problem sorted. I don't want to be told to go and come back because this is the place to come and sort it out. <laughs> There's no higher office or a different place that I can go to. Those are the issues I think people will face and I hope... But is it, you know. is it so impossible to do... Do they really need to see you before they link your numbers? Because you only just need the NIN. And to register your NIN, you need to drop a number. I don't understand. Oh, I don't know. Well, let's thing. get... There was a security, there's a security thing, you know, um, about it as well. Because for me, my own case, the fact that my number, I got my number since I was in university, my mm -hmm. very first number. So some of the, the biometrics taken then, I think mm -hmm. it was much older. So you don't have very clear pictures yeah. and things like that. So usually I think they would like you to come in so that they can do those things mm -hmm. over again and have better and clearer, whatever. You have to swear all these affidavits. So that, those are revalidation. You see this present jam. These students who wrote jam with the NIN numbers had issues. Some of them, you know how students who have like 10, 20, just be buying SIM card up and down, register with a different one, and then they had their issues with their SIM card. Some did not have the right numbers. Some have lost the card. Some could not even recover it. They didn't have their packs and all of that. They had issues before jam sorted it out. Mm -hmm. And... One of, my, one of the persons who took yeah, my, my family friend, she couldn't check her result because, you know, they need to get a code and all of that. Eventually, Jam just opened up a different portal and said, go on this particular website for those of you whose cards are lost. And that was how she was able to check her result. So I'm looking, I'm thinking, well, it cannot be that, uh, you know, the big, big names, <laughs> telcos, can solve this problem, really. You know, must it be that we crowd the offices before we unblock numbers? If you are if you're giving out a link before, and it wasn't working. I was, it worked for some other network. Open the links again with, a, with improved the innovation to make it work. Oh, it should have been nice to open our phone line. Taking people's productive time, keeping uh, them yes. out in the sun. The way people have to stand under that tree at First Act 23 <laughs> Road. It doesn't make any sense. Mm. All right, I'll have to, to open our phone lines to see if mm. the callers can call in. But do you have any comments on social media if we wrap up on this? Yeah, yeah. so um, yeah. people were just, people are complaining about mentioning different um, experiences they have had. Um, that all this linking is annoying. They should have technology to trace criminals in this age. I go into a foreign country, Southeast Asia, buy SIM at the airports and live my life. No linking of SIMs. Those things, um, please they have down. a structure. Like, no, not, not to move that. Wait, wait, wait. Mm -hmm. There was a time in their own country where they had to go through this migration. We didn't know about that then. Mm -hmm. Their own citizens also complained. After this migration is done eventually, where, where every new child comes in, the child is born, gets to the age of 16, gets their own SIM card, is ready, it's good, it eventually gets smooth enough. Yeah. These are the rough patches. So it's all this, uh, we went to the Asian country, we happened, the West too had their time where they had this rough patch. So please, nobody should be comparing no, us to this. Mm. You know, I don't even have every a problem. Every country has a rough patch. When you know, with us growing. Remember when they were trying to do this um, Medicaid, Medicaid yeah. back there, trying to figure out, because just just security number. There was a lot of issues. People were thrown off. But eventually, mm. it's been sorted. Now you go there, now you get your medical, med medical pay. So there's, there's, I don't have a problem with you know us growing at our yeah, own pace exactly. but there's a way we do things here that we don't do there's a complete disregard for human time Absolutely. Human, yeah. you know we are shaded in the sun it's not doesn't yeah. make sense you no matter who you are when you come all of us we queue becoming yes. ourselves at the gate thank you human and then at 4 p.m yeah, somebody will now come and say they are closed i got there a minute to four and somebody locked the gate you have to come back we're close i was like please we have been here 
Hey, we have closed. I was like, what am I supposed to do? Security at the gate is now doing uh, one. You are doing. Yeah. No, I, I'm not in the mood to be. Business. Yeah. Somebody, nobody should rip nobody at this time. We should be decent. I should be able to walk into your office. I'm a customer. Get my team linked. Come with my <laughs> NIN card. Give you the details, whatever you need, and walk out easily. Mm. Don't come and suffer me because I want to have a network. Let line. me take this call from Uche. It's calling from Maguru. No Thanks sense. for calling your life. We lost that call. So but I think, listen, whether we like it or not, this process, this migration has to happen. It's important. Right? We're asking that the networks mm. they are more courteous. Mm -hmm. Get you. You're going to be expecting a crowd in your offices. Get a canopy. Get chairs. Get water. Let people feel some kind of decency and yeah. dignity to their life. Don't just come in and let me able to cluster to you. It's, it's really horrible. Yeah. It's so Moses Lawa has put up some links. I don't know if he works with any of these telco companies mm -hmm. and says linking via these links actually work without having to physically visit their offices. So it's at TVC Connect. Everybody should go check it out. Let's see if he knows. You can grab it and send people it. should be <laughs> careful. Let the link not carry us to some link. link. Yeah. But I also, hey, you know, another, another thing that is also important. Oh, I have Fiona. to break. Yeah. Oh, Fiona said that if if your picture is not clear on your NIN, the no. linking will not work. Uh -huh. So that might be why some people have tried uh -huh. linking and it's not going. Okay. So that means you need to go back to NIN, verify your picture, then, and that is with money now. It's no longer free. To mm -hmm. validate we your have picture to NIN, then you now go on a back. short program. When we come back, we'll see if we can take a few more comments. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. I think I have Gemma on the call. Good morning, Gemma. You're live. Oh, I think our lines are maybe they bad. It. I um, hope not. The lines come Take the comments on Gemma. He says mm, we should talk to Ethel Nigeria for them. That they keep. Etel, okay, Etel. Yeah, they keep barring lines. They've been barring lines since one year ago. You go there, they will tell you your NIN is now linked, and then you go back home within one week. They buy it again. As you know, um, Etel should do some things. Yeah. The network. Maybe they're banter. Maybe yeah. they're banter. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the house. So um, somebody was saying that there are also subsidy, subs there is also subsidy in telco industry. Mm -hmm. The government should let the telcos charge what they deserve so they can invest in infrastructure. All this restriction is holding the country back. Mm. Somebody else say, how can the government mm. invest in infrastructure that, how can the government, who didn't invest in infrastructure, tell the telcos how much they should charge? Leave it for free. So some tel telcos are complaining that they, there's a bit of, they always, there's pu there are pushbacks when they try to increase the rates concerning phone calls and even for data delivery. Which and those pushbacks might also be affecting their ability to deliver quality service. So we're, subsidi uh, 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 we're not subsidizing, we're restricting their ability to invest. It should not even start. Invest. First of all, you, are, you started by overcharging us. We know yes. the story. Don't even, please, <laughs> ah, exactly. please. Don't let Nigerians come for you for that one. And then First, you have you yeah. overcharged us the SIM. Do you remember how much they used to sell SIM in the beginning? Mm -hmm. You people used us, finished <laughs> grow, building skyscrapers on our head. Now you are saying it's because of the pushback. Pushback is not from federal government. Pushback is from Nigerian citizens. Please. Solve this our issue yeah, now. Yeah. We don't want to stay on cues. Thanks for calling, Mr. Kola. You're live. Yeah, I'm Good morning. Yes. Ladies. Good morning. You yeah, see, this thing is very funny. My wife left this morning by 6 a.m. And when she got there, she said she met the crowd like they were mm. in the market. So people got there around 3 a.m. Mm? Wow. It is that bad. And we tried to register it at home. There's a link that then can send. We called the customer service and said we should do it. So even after the registration, they were still sending OTP to the number that is bad. Ah. So the next thing is for you to go there physically. She has been there since morning now. We don't know when she will come back. So it's, it's somehow every other time. And these numbers we've linked it before. I linked our own and my children's own. And they bad it too. My, my own is free. So I, we, don't know, we don't know the way out in this country, honestly. May God help us. Account is scary. So my, 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 I'm hoping, Dangote has been speaking a lot, doing press release. I would like the telcos to do a proper press release on what the issues are, explaining to Nigerians, you owe us that much. We are your customers and you don't have a business without your customers. So it's important that there is a proper press release to explain what happened, why this is happening. 
and put the blame where the blame should be. You might, you might end up discovering that the blame is actually with NIN, NIN. Like it's the NIN platform that is not working because I actually, there was an issue that people were saying, the telco was saying that, I'm in the office, he said, it's not us, we cannot link you. Like our own server is good, but whenever we try to get feedback from NIN server, it's not working. So there are some small, small things that it might be from the NIN, um, technology can fail. And also, you know, the messaging wasn't very specific. Because the messaging I just got, yes. NIN updates, go on, and so I, I disregarded mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. But now, imagine the messaging was clear that this your day, number, your number, your number be could be bad if you don't update by this time. You know, that is a bit more instructive and it makes somebody say, okay, let me rush down to find out what's going on. Mm -hmm. but right now, you just said, link your NIN, and I just disregarded it because I just realized that I already linked mine. Mm. So, again, it comes, comes back to communication. Mm. Who is the one putting out this communication? Who is the one alerting customers? How are you alerting them? Are you communicating what you're saying? Is it getting to them? Do they get the messages? It's a totally different thing for you to generalize messages. talk about messages. what services? Because somebody mentioned that they should be giving subsidies and all of that. Can we talk about poor services? There's this network me and I am on. There's plenty time for poor Let us focus on No, we will talk about it now. It's part of it. Okay, imagine me linking on that, the old service I got this weekend, trying to link a number on that. It's, it, it, I will go to the office eventually and go and queue and be pushed around the way I was pushed. I cannot even forget the heroin experience. See, they must improve on service and quality of call. Data that you buy, must, you must get value for your money. Mm. I will buy data and then I'll be stealing my Wi-Fi connect. My husband will be like, remove these devices from the Wi-Fi so that the, uh, other, the kids can do classes. And I'll be jumping on it just to, to push yeah. through. It, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. You buy data, you buy data there. Yeah. Right yeah, so that. that one, I have to buy data on data. two different lines. I have Wi-Fi at home and yet sometimes you don't have anything yeah. mm -hmm. coming in for you. So <laughs> excuse improvement me. in service. But for now, people have businesses. People's lives are connected to their phones. Mm -hmm. yeah. So people, this phone is the only way you can call them or reach them to conclude business. And then you have bad that number and you have to see what's going on. I'm hoping I'm really, that is resolved. We have fast. to wrap up on this. But I think really in a nutshell, we expect that um, all the various networks involved should make life easier um, for the for Nigerians who are coming to their offices in the next few days to, um, to help them with their NIN lines. And also NIN offices are likely to get more customers mm -hmm. too. So also as at the NIN, in, in, in expectation of these oh. customers coming to come and do um, the presentation, the please ensure that they are, they are treated with respect and you know some kind of decorum is, is, yeah. is, is, is put in place for them. Because that's really what causes the frustration I just get. When you mm -hmm. get somewhere and you have to line up for hours and nobody attends to you and you're not getting your things done, that's where it gets really hor horrible and complicated. Okay, we have to go on a break now. When we come back, we'll to our next topic. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. for staying with us. So our hot topic, to protest or not to protest, that's the conversation today, as momentum continues to gather ahead of the planned nationwide hashtag and bad governance protests. Many Nigerians have remained undaunted and promised to hit the streets on August 1st to demonstrate against bad governance, hardship, and hunger. What are your thoughts on this? Many governors, many leaders um, across this nation have come out in different ways to try to dissuade Nigerians um, from getting involved in the protest. What are your own thoughts? Do you agree? Do you think um, Nigerians should stand out? Do you think that uh, we should go ahead with the protest? How do you think government should respond to this? How do we ensure that um, the, um, the protests are not hijacked as expected and speculated by many of our leaders? You can join the conversation and call us on 081 0764-1679, 0902-416-3440. You can also Tweet to us at TVC Connect, please hashtag YourViewTVC so we can read your tweets. <coughs> All right, let's talk about this. Um, it's the hottest news in Nigeria now. Mm -hmm. Everybody, every speech you go to, everywhere you go to, everybody's talking about, um, in fact, gov governors are saying, trying to stop you from protesting. And we remind ourselves, it's our constitutional right to protest. Um, it's part of what is protected uh, as for Nigerians in, in, in our constitution. So protesting itself is not illegal. 
should nobody should dissuade us from protesting. But what are your thoughts? Why do you think this is a bit different from why everybody is stopping us? Trying to stop yeah, I was I was totally surprised that the level of anti protest, um, protest yeah. messaging that was coming from the government and why everybody kept saying don't protest. We are doing over and over again. It was so strong that. Because I don't, I've not been following global news or African news, so I didn't really understand until I just asked my husband, like, why, what's the, what, why are they so against it? Because the fear of what happened in Kenya. So for many Nigerians who are not aware of what happened or what's happening, it resolved it a bit in Kenya, is that a simple protest in terms of hard, like, oh, life is hard, this policy of tax, mm, tax. this policy of tax has now brought hardship on citizens, got really messy violent and deadly. So I guess um, Nigerian, the Nigerian government and Nigerians are scared that we don't want that to be our reality. We remember, we still recollect what happened with, in the NSAS protest and we're looking at what's happening in Kenya. And remember what happened with Arab Spring where it just starts with one country and then every other person starts complaining about what is going on and it becomes a, this blanket thing that is happening. So now I understand a bit about what is happening from the, why the government is so against the protest. But I'm a Nigerian. I understand that my 1,000 Naira can no longer buy what he used to buy January this year. I understand the fact that I am also having to deal with the difficulty of buying uh, from last year. If you want to, subsidy, when subsidy was gone, to fill your tank has turned to, you know, you have to be praying and chop belly before you can fill your tank. And so I can understand why Nigerians would want to start a protest. But because of the fear of all the other side effects that can happen, how many shop owners have enough bar barricades to ensure their, their goods don't get looted in the midst of this? Okay. So at this point, I am urging on the side of, can we vo verbalize our protests as opposed to going on the streets where it can become harmed, I mean, and hijacked. taken over, hijacked? If you, see, if you put it the way you said it, mm. protest has already happened. Everybody is talking about the protest. If the government, they said they don't hear this message. Only to read it, like someone, some Kongwa Jomwe. This one, the message has already been passed. You know, the truth is, just as you said, we see the hardship across everybody. I know three people now that have done various means to Jackpa. The way they Jackpa is unexplainable. <laughs> they, they, I, know, I hope it's not through this channel because they just had to leave. Mm. People are looking for, they, people are being uh, dehumanized by the standard of living where you have to beg or you eat the lowest kind of thing. So sitting the other day with my neighbor, I saw somebody just come whisper something in her ear. She goes in. So all the head of fish was what that person came to collect for her kids. Mm. And so people must survive. We must, cannot pretend that we don't know what is happening. And you know the sad part is that we see videos. I don't know whether they're verifiable, whether they're verified, of food stuff degenerating and spoiling in warehouses. Mm. Government-owned or uh, government-sponsored warehouses where... Constituents and, you know, uh, political leaders in those constituents or uh, how, uh, lawmakers and, you know, people who can reach the people immediately, the chairman, are not doing anything rather than let this food spoil. Give people, let people eat to their field. At least they say that from the belly inside, the, belly, the power inside, I'm madman, they decrease. An hungry madman, you go see, I mean, go sleep. Let people eat. Let's even know where the problem is first. In the midst of this hardship, there's so much wastage. There's so much wastage. And we don't need a October, an August first for government to hear this message. This message has long yeah, been passed. Mm -hmm. Everybody been talking about it. The deaf has talked about it. The blind has talked about it. The sink has talked about it. Everybody, we are all talking about it. And the truth is that something has to be done. Reality is the government is doing so much. The people too, are we doing so much? I was talking to a young boy recently. I said, he said, hey, we cannot, we are hungry, we are hungry. I said, ah, can you farm? This is my nephew. And he was like, ah, auntie, I'm a tech person. How ah, can I farm? I said, ah. then we will always pay for the exchange to import the food that you must eat. We will pay the exchange rates now to bring hmm. the food from the countries that are willing to farm. Are we willing to do the things to change? So this government, yeah. I, I don't envy them right now. Yeah. They have to take tough decisions. In the midst of all this actually we want to change we don't want to do so much we want government to do okay. all yeah. Mariam, what are your thoughts on this um my first thought is what is the fear protest is not riot are people planning on going on a riot so that's the question now you know um 
I still have PTSD from answers. Mm -hmm. We know. We went through a personal experience. Yeah. You both more than we. And I still think about it. I still remember how all of us in one voice were against answers and we came out and we wanted this to end. And how it went from, you know, uh, a movement for sanity in our you know, in our society, with demands that young people had put out, to burning houses, killing people, looting, assaulting and harassing human beings. So that's my fear. That's personally for me. But protests, because things are going wrong, I think that it's okay to talk about it. It's our, you know, forget that it's our constitutional right. Things are tough. And it's not about poor people, though. Middle class, rich people. See, poor people, yes, we can say, oh, our no, food, you, you know, you know, it's food. We can't get food. Food is expensive. Rich people that are employers of labor who have collected money from debt, you know, to run these businesses that they have employed us. They have collected debt in foreign exchange. They cannot pay. So everybody's affected. So you're right, uh, Nima, when you say that this protest has already started. It has started. And if this protest is really about what we are going through, then it's OK to, you know, to protest. But my fear is, is it a protest we want to do, or are we coming out to riot? Because I don't understand how, you know, when someone says, oh, in my own opinion, I don't think people should come out and protest. And then everybody's, you know, almost screaming and shouting the person down. Like, this is already conversation online. What is it that we're planning, you know? And whether we like it or not, it's still the same as that we suffer it. Uh, you know, there are some people that are able to get on a, on a, on, on a plane and leave. Yeah, they don't leave. Who do you think they will leave? It's me and you that are still suffering this um, hardship that will be here. So please, let us protest. We all are going through this hardship. The protest is to say to government, this and this and this and this is what we are going through right now. Yeah. Times are tough. We cannot even feed. Petrol is high every day. It's Look best. at the queues, you know. And now... You, so, so it's, it's right to protest, so, but my fear is, where do, what are we planning to yeah. do with this protest? So What's my, my, the end game? My, my worry has always been, because I, I, I am one, I mean, <coughs> I was born into protest, my father has been protesting, and uh, Becker and Sonkuti, all the big guys, my father knows, these are protesters that we've seen in the past, even the president himself used to be a protester. <laughs> and so protest is not something that, that we don't know of. But the protests we've seen in the past had a face, mm -hmm. had a leader. Beko Ramso Kutu called for a protest, um, Ghani Fayemi called for a protest, and we see them at the forefront leading the protest. This protest, the fear is that it is faceless. And when you have a faceless protest, because no matter how you protest, every protest ends with a conversation. Mm -hmm. Somebody has to be called to the table to negotiate. Okay, these are the demands. This is what we want. How do we meet halfway? Remember when NSA, N, hashtag NSA started? Mm -hmm. There was a letter given to Governor Sawolu. Please take this to, to President Buhari to tell him this was what well, he had. Eventually, he was, uh, eventually it turned against exactly, him. But the yeah. point is that somebody, something was given. So there has to be a face. So you can't have a protest and say, okay, it's faceless. Faceless protest can be very, very um, threatening because the governor doesn't know who is in charge. Who do we talk to? Who do we negotiate with, number one? Number two, we've seen, we didn't even need Kenya. We've seen how, Lagos State will tell you the billions they lost, the buses that were burnt in. High Court was burnt. High Court that has yes, history. Sure, yeah. Was burnt. We saw the history happen in this Lagos. We don't need Kenya. We saw enough. We had enough. Yes. Kenya, but we didn't have a clue. They actually uh, switched their, uh, their, 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 their parliament. Mm -hmm. But here, properties. Individuals. Properties. We business was lost. Malls. So we saw it. Hmm. So I think that is the fear of government. But for us to of also course. protect people's constitutional rights, it's, it's important for us to know that. Let us know who are the organizers. Let us know what their demands are. And then let us see how government can then meet so, us halfway so in this protest. I'll come to you, Nima, because I know our, our guest is already waiting. Um, okay. Mr. Daniel, um, Mr. Daniel Boala is a commentator, public affairs commentator, and he'll be joining us on the show. I hear that he's already connected with uh, on Zoom. I tried to get, get him on. It would be nice for him to join the conversation. Good morning, sir. Are you there? Oh, good. I see you're here. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <coughs> Thanks for joining us. I know that um, um, this conversation concerning the protest is, is the hottest topic in Nigeria right now, and the ladies have expressed their initial thoughts on it. I'd like to get your own initial thoughts on this protest. You've had our own views. How do you think this should be carried out in the first place? Right, good morning, and thank you for having me. In fact, at the point, I said uh, the ladies in the studios are stealing my thought because uh, most of what you guys were expressing were actually my initial thought on the matter. Now, uh, like we said, and, and it bears repeating, uh, protest is uh, constitutionally guaranteed because the Constitution uh, guarantees right of uh, assembly, peaceful assembly, expression of uh, your thoughts and opinions. So 
even if the opinion is to express your dissent against the government uh, or the way in which the government is you know, running the country. You have that right. But you know why the government is a bit, uh, is a bit skeptical about this protest and again continues to plead with the Nigerian people to uh, shield the idea of the protest is that there are characteristics of a peaceful protest that we see mm. not in this call for the protest. So what are the characteristics of a peaceful protest? Number one, identifiable leadership. Every protest must have a leader because the aim of the protest is to negotiate. And where there is no leader, then there is nobody to negotiate with. That means you are going into an endless protest, which will give room for people to hijack it uh, for their sinister plan. And and this particular one is hydra-headed because it has different groups that have different objectives. Mm -hmm. Secondly, every peaceful protest has an identifiable objective or demand. And the demand must be reasonable. The demand must be demands that can be made within the ambits of the law. For example, you cannot go protesting demanding for what the law does not provide or demanding for what is against the law. We have seen in the various characteristics of the agitation that are individuals who are making genuine you know, demands for good governance, demands for the pay rise for workers, demands for uh, solution to hunger and unemployment. But there are others who are also demanding the unconditional release of Nande Kanu. And yet we have a judicial system in Nigeria that is dealing with that. So in other words, there are some demands within the precincts of the various protests that are anti-democratic because it is not consistent with the law. When you have a protest with different demands like that, you don't know who to sit and negotiate with. You might reach an agreement with one group and the other group say we are not a party to it. Mm. That happened, I think, four years ago with the NSAS. Yeah. I remember when the video suddenly you know, emerged like a clap of thunder out of a blue sky and went to the force headquarters and thought he was negotiating on behalf of the NSAS protesters. While he was doing the conversation, so people disowned him and declared yeah. him personal non grata. I remember when Shouri was also talking about what they said, we have nothing to do with you. So when there are no identifiable leadership exactly. and you don't have identified objective, then it's difficult to deal with it. And then the last one is every protest has a timeline. You must know when to stop. What killed Ensas was that they said they were going to be on the street for about a week and then they later said it, it's going to be endless. You have to be able, when you make a demand, to give government time to meet with the demands. Now, what we are seeing building up in this present protest is the, the uh, is antithetical to what we believe as the you know, basis for protest. They don't want to leave the street. They are asking for what cannot be supported by law, and they are placing a demand for the destruction of the state and its infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And the outcome of every protest that is peaceful must not result in the loss of life, destruction of property, and undermining of the democracy, which is not what we are saying. So this is the reason why the government is begging and pleading with the Nigerian people to say, look, those of you who have genuine concern, give us time. In fact, let me be honest with you before you come up with your follow-up question. Some of the demands that were raised by the people who are planning to protest, the president has already begun implementing that. They talk about pay rights. The president has agreed with the labor workers. It has been passed to law the minimum wage. In fact, the president committed for them to say he's going to assist the private sector to meet up with those demands. Mm -hmm. They also asked for uh, government to deal with hunger. The president approved the release of truckloads of food to all the states of the Federation. They asked for governors, you know, this one they're saying, end bad governors. The president has single-handedly in the under his administration achieved the local government autonomy, which has mm -hmm. now brought financial you know, resources to the local level where governance can be delivered. Of course, you see the stimulation of economy. So he's already implementing what they're asking for. That's why he's asking. So what else? Why are mm -hmm. you going to the street? Identify yourself, come to the table. Let's have an understanding, just like the Labour Congress, and then we can make progress as a nation. Okay. Hmm. okay um, I hear what you say about, you know, having a face. But I think we've gone past that stage where we can actually identify a face to any protest. We are a large number of people. We have a very huge youth population. How do we appoint a face to a protest? This, like I said, this right. protest has already happened. <coughs> the hardship is in everybody's house. The rain is falling on everybody's roof. If the people want to express, oh. you know, this uh, hardship, is it not so, uh, sufficient for them to just carry their placards and do a, a, a protest across town rather than have a face negotiating with government that they don't even so trust? Ha so hardship is not a protest. Hardship is, is a condition. It's an unfortunate, unfortunate condition. 
Change by protest is by expression. Policies. Yes, expression a protest is expression of the hardship, and it is done in many ways. Individuals have arrived wherever they are to protest. We've been doing that every day, actually, when we meet and we talk with individuals. But this protest that they are talking about is not what you say every day in your homes or church or on the street or in the working place. This one is a coordinated expression of dissent to the government with the expectation that demands must be made. It has to be organized. So you ask the right question. How can the leaders be organized? Then my answer to your question would be, who are the people that began the initiation and giving of the date and timelines, raising of the articulation of the demands? They are human beings. They are not boats on, on Twitter. So those in the human beings that came up with the idea, came up with the date, drew up the demands, and started the planning who of the they? process. That means there's a coordination of people. Why are they hiding the head of the leadership? I thought that we, must, we ought to have learned the lesson from NSAS. NSAS could have been a huge success if people were willing to come out as leaders of those groups and negotiate. Any protest that does not have a leadership that would negotiate with government, it is not a protest. It is a sinister plan to undermine democracy. So um, I feel like you, earlier in the conversation, your first comments highlighted the fact that there are different groups with different demands. So obviously, is, do you believe that it is possible for these different groups, though, like you give example of those ones demanding for um, the release of Namdi Kano, that, okay, some of the protest condition is including that, some is including food, some is including other things. So is it possible to have these different groups who are united by the, like, okay, we have a united enemy or we have a united person that we feel can solve our problem. Can they now come together to have a leader or a group of leaders? Yeah. It is as simple as ABC. It is it's part of human nature the ability to organize, part of human nature, the ability to negotiate. So why did we say there are different groups? Because we have identified different articulation and different demands, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say if it is social media that has been the platform for uh, the coordination of this planned protest, what, do you, what they ought to have done is any group that is coming out with the 10-point demand, we, we would have seen on social media or mainstream media those ones that are asking for either five point or asking for none, they can. You get a contact, connect with them, and say, "Okay, can we have a meeting? Come with your uh, demands. We come with our demands. Get all of the people who have identified who have demands, coordinated demand. Let us have a meeting so we can agree on them. Where it's likely that point A is reflected in all of our demands. We put it as one. Point B, then those ones that are not in all of them that are peculiar to specific group, we we'll bring them together and say, "Let's dialogue." Are they achievable? Do we go with it? Do we drop it? Or do we go with this one first? If the government meets okay. with this demand, they will come up with the second. Mm -hmm. Like the way Labour said, okay, let's go with 70,000. But it's renewable. We'll come back another day. That is part of human you know, effort you know, in arriving at a good uh, negotiation. So if they had coordinated themselves, for the past two weeks, the federal government has been calling on them. Two weeks. If you truly intend to end bad governance, you truly intend to uh, bring about good governance. You truly intend to end some of the vices that you talked about in your demand. I, I believe that you will even with both hands, you know, singing, you will come identify yourself. So yeah. you can have a sit down with government. Labor sat with government and they achieved something. So when you believe that you, you cannot achieve anything meeting with the government, you rather prefer on the, to stay on the street. The government is also not saying don't stay on the street. The government is also saying that we have a duty and a right <laughs> to make sure that Nigeria runs, which includes protection of the lives and the property of citizens who are not going to be involved in the protest, to be sure that they are not looted, to be sure that there is no destruction of life and property, to be sure that the state functions consistent with national security. That's right. all that the government okay. is saying. All right, yeah. Okay, so we live in a changing world. Uh, our world is evolving, and um, a lot of things happen on social media right now. So um, I, I understand that a protest should have leadership is the way it has always worked. But with the, you know, the um, introduction of social media, a lot of people have found a way that to use it to protect themselves. So we have heard of protests before where leaders were scapegoated. So they were singled out and almost punished for even being the leader of a movement. So you will find that people now are using social media in a way to protect themselves. So I'm thinking that government also needs to find new and evolving methods for conflict resolution. 
So it doesn't matter if there is a known physical leader or is it more important that somehow the voices together are saying one thing. Most of the demands is what we've heard many people say over and over again. And what in this new changing world, in what way can government now resolve these issues in such a way that, you know, it gives people peace? Not everybody wants to come out and throw, you know, and, and destroy everything. But also, we want, that, want to know that government is hearing us without anybody being scapegoated. <clears throat> right. So you, you, you raised two points, and they are valid points. Number one, uh, the necessity of being identified in order to avoid uh, being made a scapegoat, right? Mm. There is, first of all, the response to the question will be that for anybody who ever imagines that he's going to be a leader of a movement, you know that it comes, what comes with the territory is the, the possibility of being uh, arrested or being uh, detained, but that you make up your mind if this is what it costs for me to be able to bring about this, I will. Anybody who wants to lead a protest and is not prepared to be locked up for what he believes in is a coward. That's one. But the second part is that the government will not even do it. A labor, Nigerian Labour Congress, are they not also an interest group? Have they not said so many? Have they not even gone on strike that ground the system? Was any of the leadership arrested? In fact, when you identify a leader, that is when you put the government on their toes. This is where you, you, you are able to untwist the government because the government will have no reason to clamp on anybody because there are identified leaders with identified objectives that are attainable and they are consistent with the law. The non-identification of leadership gives room for undemocratic elements and political opposition to use it in order to undermine the state and force a regime change. We have seen it all over the world. That's point number one. But point number two with what you said about governors. You see, if there were identified leaders, they would have appreciated that probably 40 to 50% of what they have already uh, begun protesting, the president is already on course, delivering on those. Because the Nigerian workers now have a good deal uh, for the start it would, in terms of their minimum wage. Then the local government autonomy is bringing governors to the local level, which means it deals with primary health care, deals with poverty, deals with insecurity at the local level, because there are resources now to be able to beef up local security and policing. Even our traditional leaders will become instrument of intelligence for the government and not for the undemocratic element. Mm. And then, of course, the third one, you have seen that the president released truckloads of food. And then the bigger conversation will be, it seems the federal government is releasing funds, the federal government is engaging. Then let us have a look at our state. Are they really re-delivering what they are receiving from the government? So this is what an organized group will be able to say, okay, right. we've gone too past this one and we'll go to the third one. But when you are not identify yourself, even when all of your needs are met, you will still not be satisfied. I remember, permit me, Maury, I remember uh, with uh, NSAS, when they tabled all of the demands and sent uh, Governor Shangolu, he went to Abuja, delivered it to the then president, President Buhari, who agreed he was going to meet all of those uh, demands. Guess what? The people on the street said that they are not even interested in that, that they will stay for as long as it takes until all of the demands are made. Government is not a magic company. There are certain demands that will take time. There are certain demands that will take consultation. There are certain demands that will take engagement. There are certain demands that will call for restructuring. And all of this will call for time. If you want yeah. overnight change, then you actually do not mean to protest. Tell us what exactly you intend to do. Okay, let me take this call. Vivian's been holding from Port Harcourt. Good morning, you're live. Yes, my name is Vivian. <coughs> I'm calling from Port Harcourt. Yes. What I'm saying in effect is Nigerians are hungry. We need to demonstrate. Mr. Tinubu is not hearing us. He doesn't understand what is happening. My children can't eat yam. I bought a piece of yam that is not as good as my ham for 8,000 naira. It's not even a no. Costa rubber of Gary is 4,005. Costa rubber of beans is 9,000. People are hungry. We don't need any faith. We did it during Buhari government. We did it, we demonstrated during Babangida. We didn't have a faith. Students, we said Babangida was poor. And he came out and listened to us. Abata kept up his cries. We did the same thing. Tinubu protested. We don't need any face. We don't need any hijacker. We don't need anybody to come and speak to us. Our stomach is speaking. What we are asking is stomach infrastructure. We are not interested in their building their roads. Whatever they are building, I don't care. We are hungry. And I cannot stand and allow my children to die in my face. This is stomach revolution. If that man does not do anything, he's going to have revolution. 
There is no pretense anymore. For I know you are with them. You go to the market. They can corrupt the men. Like the man who just spoke now. He's, 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 he's in the bush man. But they can't corrupt you, Morario. Vivian, no Vivian let me stay with you for a yeah. second. I like that we're engaged in this conversation. So let's imagine yeah. all of us go to the streets and protest. Now, some unscrupulous elements start burning down private properties as they did at hashtag answers. Some start burning, out, uh, burning down the, the, the buses as we did last time. Do you think that is what... Um, that is it. Okay, do, do, do you understand you. the reason why Nigeria, why the leaders are saying we shouldn't, we should kind of hold off on this can protest? I, can, I give, can I give you an answer? Yes. Can I give you an yes. answer to yes. your question? Now, this is a planned protest. And in plan, see, this is, can I answer you more question? Please. This is a planned protest. Okay. As a planned protest, we have the police, we have the military, we have all the paramilitary, whatever. Okay. They can monitor this protest. Thank you. Oh, uh, hello, Vivian. Oh, yikes. Okay, so we lost. So she's saying that the state should protect the protest. Now, that's fine. I mean, as I said, protesting is a constitutional right. But there was a question I had that I was actually going to ask uh, Mr. Bwala. Um, I'm not sure if it's a question because um, I was invited to a church yesterday for Sunday service, and it's a youth church. I mean, maybe I'm one of those ignorant Nigerians that I have never really attended that kind of space. <laughs> Everybody. Including, including the pastors, probably 35 and below. <laughs> so I felt like a grandma entering that church. <laughs> and and I, could, I, I came in. First of all, thankfully, nobody recognized me. I was just like a regular person. And I saw the energy. And I could almost understand the disconnect between our leaders. Because even me, Murayo, I entered and I'm thinking, where am I? Which planet am I in? I was almost, I felt secluded. Like, this is not my world. Now, imagine these guys out on the streets. All these things that the president is doing, they don't, they don't understand it. Why? it, it like, there's, a, there's a wall. They don't, they don't, they don't, they're not getting it. So it's either the government is not communicating. Okay, you've, <clears throat> you've agreed with labor, 70,000. Yes, we hear it. But how does it affect what we are buying on the street? They don't, they don't, it doesn't affect them. So there's still something, there's a wall that we need What's to break. How? They're not we in then civil get through. service. Whoa. They're not in civil service, so the seventy thousand naira does not affect them in any way. Like so they are the not ones that are going on the them. streets. They are young people. They're the ones that are hearing these messages, and they will say they're coming to the street. So the point is that what, my question to Mr. Abuala is that what the is protests that? we've seen in the past, as Mariam said earlier, yes, there are ways where you talk to the leaders, they have a conversation, but these modern um, youth. They are not interested. They just want to go on to express themselves. So how, what's the creative way that government can use mm -hmm. to communicate? Because obviously being, having a leadership is not going to work. It's not going to, it's not, it's not, it's not, the, they won't agree it's not the factor that's required right yeah, now. They're, so I, I don't know if, if, if I'm getting my question across to you properly, Mr. Bwala. Right. Yeah, I, I get your point about uh, communication. And I think that uh, <laughs> maybe there is a communication gap, but the government is making all the effort to communicate. And let me... Let me give a scenario to uh, the caller. I can, I can feel his passion. I can feel his concern. In fact, it affects all of us, right? But uh, for, I'm doing PhD here. I struggle the same. But let me give him uh, a scenario. The scenario, scenario is that he comes out because he can no longer take it. His stomach is speaking. And I'm sure when he comes out to the street, the way he sounded, he doesn't look like somebody that will be involved in violence. So mm. he will be peaceful. But there are others who do, do, may not have the patience that he has to be able to even come and call in and express it. They just are looking for opportunity. He probably has a relation, his pastor, or any member of his community who probably has a shop on the street or has a shop in a shopping mall or has a house that happens to be on the street side. somewhere all where a community, right? So what if he goes with this anger to the street and then it results in the burning of the shop of his brother or relation or somebody he knows who is also struggling to sell and has been looking for customer. And now the shop is burnt. What of the infrastructure of government that will that is necessary in dealing with the problem? So let's say Ministry of Agriculture or whatever. What of the destruction of assets of government? What about the death of people that come out to protest arising? Because the thing is, once a protest turns violent, the government has a duty by law to enforce the law and ensure that there is peace. Yeah. And in the course of doing that, there are casualties, either on the side of the pro violent protesters or on the side of the government. This is the scenario you have to look at. Yes, we're angry. Yes, we're but what if we go and this happens? Then is it worth the, uh, the protest? The second part is, 
Yes, the issue about hunger uh, is genuine. Everybody can feel it. And I like the point you said that increase of uh, money to the workers does not result in uh, increase or reduction of prices in the market or affecting those who are not in government. That's why there are these policies of releasing the truckloads of food, subsidized food. In fact, the president even said, I don't mind importing food from abroad just to make it available to the Nigerian people. There are other parts of economic reform that may not directly hit them now, but probably in the coming weeks and months, we are going to see the amelioration of the hardship. The truth of the matter, let us not go round and round. The truth of the matter, Nigeria is undergoing a reform. Reform is not convenient. Reform is not helpful. We have been living a fake national life in the yeah. past yeah. of borrowing and spending where it is not necessary, mm. of showing up, you know, showing up of the Naira, yeah. you know, with dollars, or showing up of the dollars with the Naira, of all kinds of bad policies that brought us to where we are. Yeah. And when President Tinubu came, he saw it. Unfortunately, a leader must act. Unfortunately, the leader must take the bullet. So he had to take the bull by the horn. So your point is, if this communication is consistent, this communication is appealing, probably anybody who is going through hardship, ah, they, we all go to church and they tell us that no matter what you're going through, by God's grace, we pray it to work. Why are you not angry with your pastor? And say it must happen tomorrow morning. You have faith with the pastor that the word he has spoken, or with the imam, that what he has encouraged you will come very soon. That same faith you have to the religious leaders. Have it with your government. All right, let me say, take no, this call. I can't trust the government. The religious leaders so have they not been failing? Let me take this call from Alaji to Barry's and holding. Good morning, Alaji. Good morning, Mama. Good morning. Good morning, sir. And, uh, <clears throat> and let me first of all appreciate your guest. He has broken it down. You know, the, you know. Uh, again, let me appreciate your guest. You see, let's 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 talk about the reality. Focus is a means of communication. It's a means of expression. But what we are saying is, what has happened to us in the past, we don't want it to happen to, you know, we don't want it to happen to us now. What the government is saying, you know, is trying to take up the masses, the innocent, innocent masses that are affected in the past. I bet you, look at the, 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 the period of Hedmark. People that were, you know, their property was looted, people that were, that have lost their life, police people were, well, you know, I mean, they, they, we, we heard of a lot of police people that were killed, are they, not, are they not Nigeria? All on the ground of protest. This is what the government is saying. That they need to identify, like your, your, your guest said, let the, 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 the leader come out and express and show them there so that they will now know who and who is responsible for this issue. So that is the issue. Look at what the, 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 the governor of Abia said yesterday. He said the, 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 the bad governors has been ongoing. It is not today. Our refinery has been come out, you know, for the two decades now. You know, is it, is, it, is, it, is it one year ago that our refinery is not working? So this is what we are saying. You know, there are some issues that can be solved immediately. There are some issues that can be elongated. Yeah. So what we do, the government is saying, is that for the, protection, for the protection of the citizen and property. And that is why they say people should come. So that is the bottom line. People should not misunderstand this. We all understand that process is a means of communication, of an expression. Have a nice day. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, I wanted to talk to our uh, guest. I want our guests to address the issue of, you know, the president's effort to ease things. We see um, the, uh, the five months um, relief removal of duties on importation of certain items. The distribution of food stuff across certain local government. I don't live in the Ikeja. I live in the interior of Lagos. If food stuffs are being distributed, I would have said it on the show. How come we have five different ladies here who has not experience the food stuff going around? Who are the people in charge of it? How do you verify that the food is getting to the people so that all this conversation will be limited as much as possible? Now, a young person who you're trying to convince at home will assume you received something. That's why you're convincing them. But if they have actually received, re received something dignifying, you know, as the president's intention was to reach out to his people, Nobody needs to tell the person, don't join a protest. This is, you know, something strange. But there are certain people within government who are supposed to ensure that this thing gets around, who are not doing what they should do. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And nobody is getting what they should get. And I'm calling out each chairman, uh, local government chairman to tell people what exactly they're giving out to their people. Hmm. So let me, let me quickly respond to your point. And that is uh, we are, we are, we are, we are bringing the ball home to the goalpost. This is where... Uh, people have complained that some of the appointees of the president, and I'm sorry, it is a sad thing, but I have to say it. 
sometimes we have to tell ourselves the truth. Some of the appointees, if they are effectively discharging the duties as required, they would have, you know, conveniently communicate the wisdom and the objective of the president to the Nigerian people. Because I have seen practically president bringing out of his belly everything that needs to be brought out for the good of Nigeria. I'll give you a good example. When they had the agreement with the governor for increase of allocation, remember the governors came back and asked for more. He gave them the money. They asked for food. He sent them the food. And in all of the meetings, if you have noticed, the president continues to say, look, you're, the people at the local level, you have to take care of them. So I give you an example, since we are talking about food, let's say the minister of agriculture. It is a duty of the minister of agriculture not just to dump the food, say, in one state and then go back. Your ministry must be able to have a coordinating, monitoring and evaluation group where everything that is sent to any part of Nigeria and Lagos must be brought out to the public for the public to know. So, so thing has gone to so, so place. And then there are people to monitor the implementation of that. It's not just to dump it. So the president has said, uh, uh, release food from the strategic reserve. Nigerians were not given a proper communication. Whether they, they later we started hearing there was actually no food in the strategic reserve. Let me, it's okay, release the truck loose. And that's where it ends. So the minister's duty is to communicate to the people. Now, there's another part. When the lady who was heading humanitarian was minister, she was all over the place where there are humanitarian situations. You will see her. The media will cover. You will see her in helmet. You will see her in boots. You will see her in the water places. This is what and what is expected of an appointee of the government. Now, if that lady had been in the place where she is, she would have been all over Nigeria. I'm not saying that to say whether she has been exonerated or not exonerated, but I'm giving you an example of somebody that is on duty. Take, for example, the Minister of Aviation. You can have, I have my differences with him, but he's hardworking. You could see him on every issue at the airport involving the people, instruction of people. He's every day engaging. Assuming this thing affects all other ministries. That means that communication you're talking about would have been made available to the Nigerian people, whether educated or not, whether in the rural areas or in the open places. And they will be able to assess and they say, OK, we are happy in this area. We need improvement in this area. But when people are not maximally functioning, the finger comes to the president because he appoints them. But in actual fact, these people were entrusted with responsibility and they are failing. The good news for Nigeria is that without the prompting of anybody or the protesters, the president himself said, my style of governance is there will be assessment and I will sack people who are not performing. All of this process has taken place. The report has been submitted. Any moment the president will yeah. take the decision necessary to regroup and then move forward. Nigeria needs to have a little more patience and then have faith in our government. Let me take this call. Bolan Lee, thanks for calling. You're live. Good morning, Bolan Lee. Good morning, Morayo. Yes. Please, let's go up the right thing. Because people have been suffering. It actually is too much. Like that money they want to send to the people at hand is better. But the ones the government gave to people, the people did not see anything. People are suffering. Actually, it's too much. So let government give the money to people at hand so that everybody will be okay. Because the actually is too much. People cannot bear it. So let government give them the money to people at hand. All the ones they send to Okay, um, I think, um, yeah. yeah, go ahead, sir. She yeah, was saying me, that they should yeah, get the cash. Be, what she said is, is very valid. Remember in the U.S., when the COVID broke out, they introduced, uh, President Biden introduced COVID relief funds. The yeah. COVID relief funds go directly to the Nigerian, I mean, to the American people, American citizen, right? If you're living in America, you are documented uh, citizen or resident in America, you get the COVID relief form directly to your account. Ascertainable. And it can reach you now. But when you pass, assuming this food thing is something that can be sent through account, people will get it. But you know the middleman, the third party, the manipulation. Imagine you are sending food to governor. It is rebranded for election of 2027. It is quite sad. So what she is saying with respect to the relief fund for money sending to the accounts will be powerful. Except that there are people in rural areas who do not have bank accounts. You also have to find ways of communicating this money to them. There are people who do not have bank account. So, but that is an effective approach. In fact, I would highly recommend that approach much more than passing whatever it is through a third party. So and then before you know, there is a stealing or manipulation of that. Hmm. Um, so, Mr. David Barley, the, the challenge is we've had two women callers 
who are for the protest, they are not, they don't, they don't sound like, oh, we are on um, TikTok or Instagram based. They are just people that heard about the protest and feel based on the hardship they are facing, nobody should stop them from being able to protest. And they are of the opinion that they will not destroy any property. And many Nigerians share that. So I'm worried that this fear of destruction of property will be disenfranchising um, Ni other innocent Nigerians who feel, I just want my voice to be heard from being able to express themselves. Do you by any chance feel that there are ways we can maybe ensure that we curtail the path of the protesters or limit where they have access to and allow them express themselves, protect them and ensure that it, their um, ability to express themselves does not hurt other Nigerian businesses? No doubt that if you look at the case in Kenya, it didn't start with violence. They were coordinated. They said they were going to do whatever, but they stayed beyond the time and they could not see the realities of what can and cannot be within the short time that they can get from the uh, Kenyan government. They allowed emotions to get the better part of them. The result is that Kenya is 50 years backwards now, as I'm telling you. As individuals, they are suffering, and as a country, they are. Now, coming to Nigeria, we've had a similar situation in NSAS. NSAS appears to be a century organized program. They were so organized, they were music, they were being supplied food, they were playing, and then suddenly when the government said, I will meet your objective, and they said, we won't leave the street, you have to know when the music stops. As soon as they said, we won't leave the street, the next thing we start seeing is that elements who wanted to subvert the process now started looting. From among them, I don't think that the elements were imported from the other side, from among them, because one thing about human frustration is that when you cannot get assurances within a specified period of time, the, there is a part of human being that is like madness. It tells you to do whatever there is a prompting to do. And then you have elements who already our society has, those who are thugs, those who uh, you know, thieves, kidnappers, and robbers, and the rest. They cherish this opportunity because this is the only time they can do it and get people clapping for them than they can do it and get arrested by the law enforcement. So that is, and government runs with intelligence. The difference between that market woman and the government is that government has intelligence she does not have. She does not know probably from her neighborhood somebody is planning to steal her things. But the government, based on the infrastructure they have, listening to what has been going on, can tell who are behind the uh, politicians that are behind it. Genuine agitation by Nigerians, but hijacked by undemocratic elements. It has to be made clear. Genuine intention, but hijacked by individuals. In order to separate the genuineness of that demand, and the hijackers is that those who have the demand should be able to identify leaders, meet with the government, agree on a point, give a timeline, tell your people, let's give government two weeks or three weeks based on our agreement. If right. they don't do it, we'll come to the street. <coughs> that is the way to go. Let me take Usman from Abuja. Thanks for calling Usman. Uh, Mariah, and, and Good morning, so, sir. It's a wonderful program and a wonderful topic has been lingering in the country for more than how many uh, days now. Uh, it is quite nice that uh, Nigerians are trying to realize uh, their rights. But in as long as you are thinking about your rights, you call it consider consider the government. This is the first time we are getting a, a president that is very decisive. decisive. This is the first time we are, we are, we are seeing a president that has, is not thinking about the second time. He's thinking about how to fit Nigeria. But what is killing Nigeria now is that the president he has gotten his own. We are all supporting him. But you cannot be a father. You said you are eating uh, uh, okra soup in your house. You give okra soup to everybody to eat. And you are now at the same time thinking about you have to go and buy chicken. It is to look very, uh, is that, you, are, you are talking strange. Nigerians are admiring the president we have. But all of a sudden, they now hear that uh, uh, Mr. President, you have to buy a helicopter, you have to buy a plane, you have to buy that. Meaning, if you say you don't have money, why are you going into that? You can change this money for people to have, have something to eat. You can have price control. You can go into the root of this problem. There are people that are frustrating the man. We appreciate him. He's very decisive. He's trying to bring Nigeria to a right channel where the youth should have their own, but he should lead by example.
Okay. That is my Thank opinion. you very much, Engineer Osman. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Bwala, earlier on, you know, <clears throat> you highlighted the inefficiencies or ineffectiveness of some government appointees. And, you know, that, <clears throat> that's definitely a valid um, reason for some of the issues that we're facing. But also, how about elected Nigerians? We have governors. What role do they play? Because many times, you know, I feel that we're so quick to run to the presidency or the federal government for our issues. Meanwhile, we have state governors. And thankfully now, with the financial autonomy, we can be able to point to local government chairpersons. How would you say governors have been doing in this one year, within this one-year administration? Is this something we're proud of, or do we want to see them do better? <clears throat> like I said, I was one of the, if not the leading person, right from the days of uh, President Buhari, to talk about uh, the, the need for us to look at governors. And I said it over and over, and it bears repeating that governors determine everything in Nigeria. Governors determine even the people the president work with. I said it. The governor determines who goes to the National Assembly as a House of Rebels Senator. He determines who becomes the president's minister by his nomination. The same thing with the DG, the same thing with the ambassadors, even the judges at the federal level, the governor's influence. That is no part of our human existence under our democratic framework that the governors are not playing a pivot role. The only part where the government has not shown responsibility is their home state. And we, we, we build our conversation around this narrative as if we are running a unitary government. So what happened in my village, the president is responsible. And the governor wants you to believe that, but he doesn't want anybody to talk about the money is coming to him. Look at even the autonomy of local government and the state, I mean the financial autonomy of local government, the way in which the governors were resisting. When it comes to resources coming, they will teach you through federalism. When it comes to administering the resources for the good of the people, they say the president is interfering on local government matters. So the governors are the problem, and I've been saying that. Now look at increased allocation. Increased allocation by 75%, over 100% to states. Do you know that 90% of the states of the federation, they have not actually moved an inch from when they were receiving the old allocation to the increased allocation in delivering governance to their people. And the allocation is just one part. They have internally generated revenue, they have domestic loan they collect, and they have a foreign loan, as well as grants that they receive. So what are these governors up to doing? The reason why they do that successfully is because even the media houses in Nigeria, and I make bold to say, hardly stay on a conversation around responsibility of governors because majority of their clientele and customers are the state government that mm. patronize the media houses. So if we talk about governors today, tomorrow, everybody keeps quiet until another day. But president, 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 my wife insulted me. President Tinubu is responsible. <laughs> in my village, they say I'm a madman. President Tinubu is responsible. But All when right. President Tinubu says financial autonomy needs to be in the local government, the government will they march like a clap of thunder out of the blue sky and talk about true federalism. Let me take, let me take this call from Karade, calling from Shagamu. Thanks for calling. Good morning, Karade. Hello? Good morning, you're live. Go ahead, please. Hello, Karade. Hello? Yeah. You're live. Go ahead, please. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, I want to, my, I quite agree with most of what the caller has been saying this morning. They have been calling. Yeah. Well, I can't hear Coyote. Hello? Hello, Coyote. Are you there? All right. So let me just ask you this final question because we wrap up. Because many have called, I mean, NLC and a few other um, parasitals, government parasitals, have asked that the protesters should leave Lagos State out of their protests because um, if we look at the other sectors, they believe that Lagos is working you know, in, in many ways, that protests should probably concentrate more in other, either in Abuja, which, where there is the state of power, and other states where they are owing um, um, civil servant salaries for months, um, states where they are still having issues with general development. But Lagos State has lost quite a bit of money at the last um, hashtag answers, and it's, it will only be respectful for protesters, protesters understand that Lagos is still somewhat trying to revive from that last um, episode of the protest, and that far, for far and wide somewhat, Lagos is working. So they, they are advising that protesters should consider leaving Lagos out of it. How, how do you respond to that? Yeah, apart from Lagos, there are one or two other states that if you go there, they are meeting up with the minimum wage, they are doing infrastructure. Like, take, for example, Lagos. I mean, Lagos competes with some countries in Africa, not just states. 
in terms of minimum wage is being paid, you are seeing investment in healthcare, transportation is ultra modern. Then you are seeing the areas in which they are bringing these governors to the rural areas in Lagos. If you compare Lagos of today and then maybe many years ago, if you look compare Lagos of today with what they are doing, you will know that Lagos is actively uh, involved or probably leading. But Lagos has the highest concentration of those who want to protest. That should be able to send a message. They are targeting infrastructure of state to destroy. After NSAS, you saw what happened to Lagos in terms of the destruction of government infrastructure, yet Lagos is working as comparable to other states of impedition. And Lagos is just an example. There are other states of impedition where you see efforts by the governors. So if you are actually doing a, a protest for the purposes of entrenching good governance that you talk about, good governance starts at a local level under the framework of federalism. You are supposed to launch your protest in state first before you come to the federal government. In other words, now that you have increased allocation as a state, now that you have additional funds as a state, we want to know what you're doing. Because you see, at the federal level, the National Assembly can checkmate the president, the judicial branch can checkmate the president, at the state, is it the same? Yeah, but the, the House of Assembly of the state, a mere appendage, the judiciary at the state, they have been oppressed by the city of So there is actually no governor, the end part governor, yeah. to start in state because it is a state that there is no governance. Okay. But this is not about end bad, end bad governance in the races of the world for those who are trying to subvert democracy. Okay. Their target is President Tinubu. We, we have to him, we have to not give him time you. to settle and make him unpopular. We have to wrap up with you, but I can't let you go without asking the relationship between you and, uh, and Senator Alain Dume, who is your principal. Uh, well, Senator, he's not my principal. He happens to be a senator from my district. And he's, we've been very good, we have been good friends, until when I met with the president, and then jealousy kicked in. And then he started, you know, murmuring here and there. I continued to meet with the president. And by the time I met with the president in, uh, in Saudi Arabia, he felt he can't, you know, can't hold it further. So he started jumping from one media house or the other, denigrating the president, saying the president is in a cage, he's controlled by people, all kinds of things started. So I now said, this is a senator representing my district. I need to call out that people, Chrissy. I did an article calling it out. He now got angry, went to my state, tried to mobilize people in my local government to do protests against me. He now spoke whatever he spoke two days ago, insulting me that I am a paid lawyer, I am a, a dog, and the rest. So yesterday, I replied him, in a very concise article that I think should even be published and be given to okay. everybody at primary school okay. and secondary school all right. to know the politicians they must avoid. All right. Thank you very much. That's all we can take. Thank you very much, wow. Mr. Daniel Bwala, for joining us this morning. That's all we can take on today's show. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.